Well, welcome folks to our soil pit outside of beautiful Alvina, Saskatchewan. What we're going to do in our video today is to do an overview of the pit that we have beside us and talk about the properties that we'll be covering in a series of videos associated with this course. Throughout the material, I'll be referring to this uh, field handbook for the soils of Western Canada, which is available to you free of charge online. The profile we have in front of us, uh, we begin by breaking it into different layers or horizons. And the way to think about these horizons is that 10,000 years ago, when the great ice sheets had just left this area, the whole profile would have been composed of the same material. Basically, the material we can see the, at the bottom of this uh, profile. Over the 10,000 years since then, soil forming processes have affected that original material or parent material, creating the different layers we see before us. Originally, the light colored material, which is calcium carbonate or lime, would have been evenly distributed throughout this profile. But over 10,000 years, soil formation has transported it uh, within the profile itself. In the upper part of the profile, the first thing that occurs is that the organic matter from the grasses and the shrubs we can see here input organic matter into that upper profile, creating a dark brown or black layer. The middle layer you can see has less organic matter in it, but the calcium carbonate and the salts from this layer have been transported out by water and deposited further down in the profile. So in terms of master horizons then, we have the upper or the A horizon, which is organically enriched. We have the middle or B horizon, which has had the salts and calcium carbonate removed from it. And then we have the C horizon. The C horizon has the original carbonate from the parent material, plus the carbonate that's been deposited from the upper part of the soil profile. We test for the presence of calcium carbonate using a dilute hydrochloric acid. So a 10% normal hydrochloric acid. When the hydrochloric acid contacts calcium carbonate, it releases CO2 as bubbles. And the extent of the bubbling is what we term effervescence. Throughout these videos, we'll be using different categories or classes, and they're defined by the Canadian system of soil classification. So when we add the hydrochloric acid to the A horizon, there's no reaction, it simply soaks into the profile. Same for the B horizon, no reaction, where as soon as we contact this lighter colored material, we get vigorous bubbling occurring and it forms a complete foam over the surface of it. And these very light patches are even higher in calcium carbonate and they would have even more effervescence associated with it. So in terms of the categories in the Canadian system of soil classification, we would say that this is strong effervescence in the sea horizon. Once we have our preliminary horizons, we'd like to take a measurement of their thickness. And we set zero as the top of the soil surface. And we measure each horizon in a few locations and take the average of that thickness. So the A horizon here at this location is about 14 here about 13, over here about 13 again, here a bit thicker down to about 16, and at its thinnest it's about 10 centimeters. So we would roughly average that out to be about 13 centimeters thickness, and we would record that as 0 to 13 centimeters. The B horizon we again measure in several locations. So here it's about 16 centimeters, here about 14, here a little bit thicker at 19, over here 19 again. So we'd average that at about 17 centimeters of thickness. The C horizon, we don't know what the lower boundary is to it, but we would record the total thickness of the profile so in this case, down to about 90 centimeters. 
and we record that as part of our profile description, and then we follow it with a description of the boundary itself, the form of the boundary. The final thing we'll look at in this video are the boundaries between the layers, which we need to describe. And we describe two things. First of all, we describe how quickly, over what distance, one horizon changes to the other horizon. So if we look at the contact between the A and the B horizon, it's occurring over about two to five centimeters. And that's a horizon uh, we would call, put in the class as clear. So it's a clear boundary. The distinction between the B horizon and the C horizon is very quick because of the calcium carbonate. No carbonate here, higher carbonate here. It's over less than two centimeters, so we would say it's an abrupt boundary. We also look at the form of the boundary. Is it absolutely straight? Is it broken? Is it irregular? If we look at the contact between the A and the B, it's somewhat wavy. So there's pockets in it, but the pockets are quite wide. And the form for that we would describe as wavy. The contact between the B and the C, on the other hand, as you can see, is relatively level. It slopes a bit, but it's relatively level across the profile. So we would say that that's a uh, smooth boundary. Very little uh, uh, difference across the elevation of that.